TV3's Earth Day series is brought to you by Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, Prairie Restorations, Inc., East Ottertail Soil and Water Conservation District, Becker Monoman Corn and Soybean Growers, Minnesota Soybean Research and Promotion Council, Minnesota Corn Growers Association, and Corn Utilization and Technology. Hi, welcome to our Earth Day series. I'm Erica Gilsdorf, this is Blaine Keller with Prairie Restoration, and I'm really excited because I love what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, Blaine's gonna be sharing with us on native plants, native flowers. Tell me a little bit about what you do here. Like, why are we out in the middle of this field? So, Prairie Restorations is a company that specializes in using native grasses and wildflowers in a landscape setting as kind of an alternative to your traditional sod-based landscape. Um, it's a more environmentally friendly, um, aesthetically pleasing. It attracts songbirds, butterflies, helps filter groundwater, um, helps recharge groundwater, um, and it's just a lot less maintenance, so you're using a lot less mechanical equipment to maintain it, so you're putting less carbon in the air. You know, and a lot of people have this false image that like native plants, flowers is like gonna be, maybe some people think of it as like boring or plain. And I love last year, we got a packet or the year before from the US Fish and Wildlife, a little packet of seeds. Mm -hmm. And we just easily sprinkled them on our lawn like they said where we wanted to. And it was so much fun seeing all these different flowers and plants come up all throughout the year. So, I mean, and then you see the, all the bees and everything, the butterflies and everything that are attracted to these different plants. So anybody can do any little piece, right? Correct, yeah. We do very large conservation-based projects and we also do small garden type projects. Um, every little bit helps. If you have a, a normal um, 8,000 square foot city lot, even just a little piece adds to your landscape. And collectively, all those little pieces will help um, pollinators and uh, other songbirds and things like that. Um, just every little piece is, is, uh, is the key. Collectively, it makes a big impact. Uh, the key is diversity too. Like you said, a packet of seed, that packet of seed you had may have 20 to 30 different species in it. So those species are blooming at all parts of the year. So you'll have a bloom from say May all the way through October. So it's changing all through the season. Right, and when we say bees, some people are like, oh, we don't want bees in our lawn. It's the diversity of butterfly, bees, birds. It's, it's what attracts and keeps our ecosystem healthy in our... Correct, correct, yeah. And the, the bees that we're talking about aren't, aren't like wasps or stinging bees. They're, they're, they're the pollinator type bees that feed on nectar, not, not st like stinging bees. Right, yeah. right, and I just wanted people to understand that yep. because that's what makes it so attractive and when you can tell the difference in lawns. And like shoreland, we live on a lake and I love the people that have uh, some native flowers and plants. It's so much different. It's changing than the, I want the green mode. People are liking the birds and the beauty that native plants right, and flowers right. bring. Right, right. On Lake Shores, it's very, very good to have uh, that buffer strip. You have that, that mowed lawn and when you get rainwater, it flows right into the lake and eutrophicates the lake, causing algal blooms and things like that. Having these native buffer strips, um, they're great to look at. It helps filter that runoff water before it hits the lake and keeps your lake clean. And also you said it saves on money because you don't have to do all the hurt, you know, the pesticides and all that stuff right. on native plants. So. Right, you're not having to mow it, you're not having to do all of these things. There is some maintenance, there will always be some maintenance, but it's far less than your traditional type landscape. So we've got a little bit more time. Tell me quickly, what you do is then you harvest here, right? This is Yeah, where so our production farm here south of Glendon is about 500 acres where we grow our own native grasses and wildflowers. So we grow it in monoculture fields, we harvest that seed, and we clean it in the wintertime, get it to a marketable product, and then we control the diversity of that so we can actually mix that seed to create custom mixes for each individual um, environment. So if it's a dry site, a wet site, shady, sunny, those types of things, we can actually put the right seeds in the right spots. Awesome. Well, let's go see what some of your processed seeds look like ready for market. Okay. All right. So the key to any good planting is starting with a good seed source. So we take our seed that we harvest and we run it through machines to get a marketable, clean product. And uh, we take out the chaff, 
and you can compare that to the good seed. Make that a marketable product that we can we can uh, sell to people and provide a, a good quality product. And you and you sell any size pack from little packages to like this one. This is a package Correct. of what of a black eyed Susan. Okay, so yep. and how do people get product from the small varieties to bigger sizes? So what they can do is they can contact us directly, and we can help you through the ordering process. Or you can go to our website if you want to and order it on your own. By contacting us, we can help you kind of decide what's the best um, flowers, grasses for your area, whether it be dry, wet, shady, okay. sunny, that kind of thing. Great, great. Well, thanks for being part of our Earth Day series. And I hope all of you will contact Prairie Restoration. Consider planting a few native plants, grasses in your lawn that attract uh, more pollinators and more wildlife, help our lakes and everything. So happy Earth Day, everybody. Thank you.